The coronavirus pandemic is not just a threat to the nation's health, but also our economy. Joining us now to discuss that is Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. Mr. Secretary, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thank you. Great to be with you. A growing number of financial experts say now that the U.S. and the world are headed into a recession this year. Uh, and they talk about an expanding hit both on the demand side and the supply side. Are they right? Well, Chris, what I would say is I wouldn't focus on the technical issue of whether we're going to be in a recession or not. What I'd focus on is, one, what do we need to do right now? Because it's clear we need to get economic relief to the economy. And two, where are we going to be later this year? If the medical professionals are correct and we're doing all the things, uh, I expect we'll have a big rebound uh, later in the year. So th this isn't like the financial crisis, as I've said. Th this will have an end to it as we confront the virus. I, I going to press a little bit on this and then we'll move on, but you, you've got disruptions to the global supply chain and even more important, you've got consumers who have been the main drivers of this economy and, and their com consumer spending is grinding to a halt. I understand as the Secretary of the Treasury you don't want to uh, predict uh, a recession, but it could happen. Chris, what I'd focus on is that we need to get economic relief to the people that are impacted by this. And as I've kind of described this, we're in the second inning. The first inning was the $8 billion. The second inning, we passed bipartisan legislation to make sure that workers that need to be home and small and medium-sized businesses will get paid. We are now going back to Congress and focusing this week on the airlines industry, the hotel industry, the cruise ship. There's no question that the travel industry has been impacted like we've never seen before. The president is absolutely determined that we will use whatever tools we have and whatever tools we need, we will go to Congress and get, and there's a lot of bipartisan support. There's, that's an important message, and we're gonna get into that in detail, but you know, people are living in the here and now, and I have to ask you, people are looking at their 401ks, we look at that number in the corner of the screen and the Dow Jones dropping. According to one estimate, the, the market, has lost almost $8 trillion in value from its record high, which was just a month ago. How much further are the markets going to drop? You know, I've, I've always been one to say I can't predict where the market is today, this week. What I can tell you is people who bought stocks after the crash in 87, people who bought stocks after the financial crisis did really well. So in terms of long-term investors, I have every confidence that this market is going to be higher down the road and the U.S. is still the greatest place to invest. But you talk about, you know, who bought after the crash. When is after the crash? Chris, we, can't, we can never predict the bottom of the market or the top of the market, and that's why investors need to focus on the long term. But again, let me go back and say, there's no question. There are businesses that will be severely impacted. We are focused on helping those businesses that need liquidity. There are some businesses that are booming. I mean, you look at the stores and, and, and people who are buying certain consumer products. What we've seen from the credit card data is travel is down extraordinary almost corresponding is an increase in purchases of food, pharmacy good, and supplies. And again, what we're focused on, and the, pre the president wants us to look at a big stimulus program, because we need to help American workers now. Let's talk, you'll be happy to know now, about some of the things that you're doing to try to alleviate the, the issue. Early Saturday morning, the House passed a relief bill, and I want to put up on the screen some of the measures that it includes. Free coronavirus testing, two weeks of paid sick leave for workers. It extends unemployment insurance, and it expands food assistance. It also provides aid to small businesses. Two questions for you. First of all, any idea, because nobody seems to have figured this out yet, how much is that bill going to cost the federal government? Well, let me ask you that first. Well, Chris, as, as you know, it's, it's, it's hard to model some of these things because you don't know how many workers are going to be home. So I, I want to be careful of throwing out numbers. Um, I, I think, uh, based upon the numbers that we're going to see, it, it, it's going to have costs that are significant, but not huge. But Can you let, give us a ballpark? Uh, again, I, I think, you know, th th this, again, let's just focus, this focuses on employees that are employers that are 500 and, and less right. people. 
Um, that's a portion of the economy, but that's the economy that is going to be hit the hardest. Obviously, big companies can afford these things for health care workers. So I want to be careful to throw out a number. We are modeling it. We will have it this week. But the, the important issue is whatever we need, we are going to get from Congress. All right. Well, that's what I want to pick up on next. The president tweeted Friday evening that he will sign this bill that the House passed. How confident are you that the Senate will pass this bill this week and send it to the president? Well, let me just say the president tweeted that because we kept the president and the vice president involved in all the details of this. And uh, the president drafted the tweet a little bit earlier, but we asked him not to send it out till we had the, the final language that we were working on. Um, I've been speaking to senators all day yesterday. Uh, we've had conversations with Mitch McConnell and team along the way. One of the things I will tell you is we are hearing feedback that certain small businesses are concerned about the burden of this. We were very focused. We need to get the money to the people quickly. We don't want them to have to deal with big bureaucracy. And one of the things I put out a statement last night that small businesses will be able to go to the IRS and use the deposits that they put with the IRS, and if they need a cash advance, they'll get it from the IRS. But, but what I'm, I guess I'm getting at is the Senate, you think, likely to pass this bill or pass a different version, and then we're back in legislative sausage making on Capitol Hill. I'm speaking to senators. I, I, I don't want to predict, okay? I think there's a lot of bipartisan support. Uh, we hope they pass this bill. If not, we'll work with the Senate on whatever minor changes we need. All right. You but said, Chris, let me just say, yes. again, you know, we're going back to the Senate this week on other things. Uh, airlines, very focused on airlines. Hotels, cruise ships, workers for these industries. So. We're going to get this bill done, and we're going to get more bills done on a bipartisan basis. Let me ask basis. you about that, the, the help for specific industries that are obviously going to be hard hit. You keep saying it's not a bailout. How is it different than what the Bush and Obama administrations did for the banking and auto industry in 2008 and 2009? Well, the good news is the banks are in extraordinary uh, conditions in both capital and liquidity. There were concerns at the time because of the housing crisis right. uh, that banks weren't going to make it through. I mean, there well, are, I guess my question is, those were those were bailouts. Why aren't these bailouts? Again, what I would describe is if you're providing liquidity to good businesses that just need liquidity for three to six months, where you're taking collateral and, and you have security, that's not a bailout. To the extent that we need to support different businesses that are impacted. Again, our focus is going to be on stimulus for the workers and getting money to the workers that impact it. Let's talk about one of the most controversial parts of a possible uh, plan, a relief plan, uh, the, th the third effort uh, by your, your administration and, and the Congress. Uh, there's been a lot of talk. You and the president have both pushed the idea of a payroll tax holiday, a t payroll tax uh, suspension until the end of the year, which according to one estimate would cost somewhere between 800 and a trillion, 800 billion and a trillion dollars. But you're getting pushback from Democrats and Republicans in Congress who say it's not helping the people who need it most are going to be thrown out of work or who work in the d gig economy and don't pay payroll taxes. Given that pushback, are you considering, instead of the payroll tax suspension, another tax measure? Chris, the president wants to get economic relief to the right people. The payroll tax is one way of doing it, and he likes that. The president is also willing to consider refundable tax credits, which in essence are another way of getting money to people. That has certain advantages if we can inject money really quickly. But the president is focused that we work on a bipartisan basis to make sure we combat the economic situation that is here and now, but that we expect as we do the medical things to combat this virus, the economy will bounce back. So you're not locked into the payroll tax? Uh, again, the president likes that idea, but if there's other ways working with Congress we can get money to people, the president will absolutely consider that. Finally, there was a report that you met with the president and some other people on Monday and that he erupted and he urged you to go to Jay Powell, the Fed Reserve chairman, and do more to stop the, the stock market from declining and to stimulate the economy. First of all, did that happen? And secondly, have you asked the Fed Reserve chairman to do more, for instance, cutting interest rates more? 
Chris, let me just comment. First of all, I knew the president before I came in to work for him. I worked for him on the, the campaign. I've known him for 15 years. No, the president didn't erupt at me. Okay, the president and I can, I give him my honest opinions, and I respect that he tells me what he wants us to do. So, no, this wasn't erupt. Now, as it relates to the Fed chair, just as a matter of policy, um, I don't comment on my conversations with the Fed chair. I can tell you I am in daily conversations with Jay Powell. We're looking at the tools we have. They're looking at the tools they have. Certain tools were taken away from both of us after the financial crisis with Dodd-Frank. If we need more tools, we'll go back to Congress and get bipartisan support to get that. And in 30 seconds, very quickly, when people are scared to go out to a restaurant or to get it on an airplane, if you were to cut the interest rate half a point, is that going to make any difference? Well, let me just say uh, again, and I want to be careful because I don't comment on specific Fed actions, but the market has already reacted. So as an example, our Treasury borrowing cost on a short-term basis is down to 25 basis points. So we have a lot of flexibility to inject things in. Uh, people are focused on interest rates. People are also focused on other actions, the Fed putting a trillion and a half dollars into short-term liquidity was obviously an extraordinary move. We're going to leave it there. Secretary Mnuchin, thank you so much. Obviously, people concerned, as I say, about the economic as well as the public health aspects of this. Thank you for coming in today and sharing your time with us. Great to always be with you. Thank you, sir.